This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. Well, it appears there is a problem in transferring all of us from an analog world into a digital world. As we wade into another month of deconstruction all around us, we should pause and thank God for the great unveiling that has been occurring all over the world. For the first time in this current simulacrium revolution, we have reached the point where the average man or woman in Italy, Denmark, France, the United Kingdom, Australia, Israel, Austria, the Czech Republic, Netherlands, Switzerland, and Canada have finally come to the realization that they have been massively manipulated by their governments, by the social media giants, by the pharmaceutical industry, by the medical community, by the major faith leaders of the world, by large international corporations, and by supranational NGOs like the United Nations and the World Economic Forum, to funnel every man, woman, and child into a prefabricated, pre-planned one solution to the problem that all of those that I just mentioned created. A great reset. A great reset that is propelled by economic lockdowns, by the crushing of normal life, by the enforcement of vaccination mandates, by the ending of the freedom of movement, by the censorship of any opposing opinions by the end of free discourse, by the end of the scientific method, by the end of the freedom of worship, by the end of capitalism, by the end of our familial and national traditions, by the end of our personal autonomy, and to adopt the model of a new, fabricated, surreal, synthetic world of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Now, you and I could have no say in this. There could be no debate in regards to the merits and the rather obvious defects and drawbacks of a technocratic, enviro-communo-fascist supranational government that is internally powered by artificial intelligence. I mean, who wouldn't want to be modern and told what to think, what to do, who to talk to today, 24 hours a day? Who wouldn't want to remove personal choice from previously free people? I mean, who would want to change their free and open nation into a digital prison colony which resembles the modern tyrannical state of China? I can tell you who would want that insane idea. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The effeminate man-child who was ruling Canada like a tin-pot dictator. Just like Jacinda Ardern. The Prime Minister of New Zealand, who recently admitted that she was trying to create a divisive, two-tier society using vaccination mandates to divide her nation. Just like French President Emmanuel Macron, who used divisive vulgar language on his own citizens after he used a slang term to say that he wanted to make life difficult for unvaccinated people. Quote, I really want to piss them off and will carry on doing this to the end. End quote. Yet Macron went on to say this as well. Quote, I won't send unvaccinated people to prison. So we need to tell them from the 15th of January, you will no longer be able to go to the restaurant. You will no longer be able to go for a coffee. You will no longer be able to go to the theater. You will no longer be able to go to the cinema. End quote. So what French President Emmanuel Macron is obviously doing is trying to make sure that the unvaccinated know that they are now second class citizens that they aren't part of the global citizenry. He is attempting to make them the scapegoat for everything that is wrong with France. And as we circle back to the boy that would be king, Justin Trudeau, you will hear the same sort of rhetoric. The rhetoric that divides and the propaganda that ends up destroying lives. Kind of like the Third Reich. Because in many ways, this is the Fourth Reich. And now Justin Trudeau in the most disgusting display imaginable, is accusing his Canadian citizens who want their freedoms and liberties back of being a bunch 
of deplorable racists and anti-Semites and misogynists. So the man, Trudeau, who is actually using many of the same techniques used by the Third Reich and as well by Stalin, as he used against Ukraine to disrupt and dismantle Canada. So he is accusing anyone who protests against his tyranny as being against the true spirit of Justin Trudeau's new, transformed, supranational, totalitarian Canada. So when tens of thousands of truckers and literally hundreds of thousands of average citizens, possibly in the millions, take to the streets of Canada in sub-zero weather to protest the move to totalitarian and socialism that Trudeau would have them do, to protest the oppression and the restriction of liberties of their countrymen, to protest the forcing of medical mandates, to protest the end of their ability to be autonomous, independent people, And this group of protesters, this group of people, these Canadians are made up of Asians, whites, blacks, indigenous people groups, Muslims, evangelicals, atheists, Catholics, Sikhs, Buddhists. In other words, it is everyone. Everyone who believes that liberty, freedom, and the rights of the individual man or woman are paramount. And they are together. They are unified. And their unification is around the Canadian flag. Because that is what a flag is for. The flag represents what Canada and Canada's laws represent. And what has happened now is that the Canadian government is infringing upon the Canadian Charter of Rights. So there is an insurrection of sorts of the leadership of Canada to attack what Canada is all about. And what Canada is about is what is being attacked by the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. Because Justin Trudeau is attempting to fundamentally change Canada. In other words, he's trying to deconstruct Canada. He's attacking Canada to take away the Charter of Rights of its citizens, to now guide Canada into a supranational direction where the Charter of Rights is null and void, where the fate of Canadians can be determined by a supranational entity, not by the will of the citizens of Canada. And so the protesters are unifying around the flag of Canada, and what Canada was about, because they want to preserve Canada. They are fighting for their country. Like any patriot who has fought for their country in the last 250 years, they are fighting for the rights of their family, their children, so that their children can grow up in freedom and liberty so that they may personally decide the direction of their own lives. And so these patriots, they rally around the Canadian flag. As Jordan Peterson has said, if you are unified with other like-minded patriots, where everyone's eyes are pointing at the same thing, well, that's what a flag is for. A flag indicates a union of purpose. And if there is a union of purpose, then we are all predictable to one another because we know what everybody's up to, and that's the same as peace. So if you fragment that, allow it to disappear, you criticize it out of existence, then you have atomized society. And an atomized society, a divided society, is a violent chaos. It isn't an anarchic utopia that Trudeau dreams for. It is an absolute catastrophe. So Trudeau is attempting to defeat what Canada was. To create a new nation-state sort of Canada that is part of a larger global system. And he is trying to defeat old Canada. 
So the truckers and the protesters are rallying around the old Canadian flag. Because it still stands for something. Because they know what that old charter of rights guarantees them. The right to be free. And so when they gather around that old Canadian flag and sing, O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love thou dost in us command. We see thee rising fair, dear land, the true north strong and free, and stand on guard, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, where pines and maples grow, great prairies spread and lordly rivers flow, how dear to us thy broad domain, from east to western sea, thou land of hope for all who toil, true north strong and free. O Canada, beneath thy shining skies, may stalwart sons and gentle maidens rise to keep thee steadfast through the years from east to western sea, our own beloved native land, our true north, strong and free. Ruler supreme, who hearest humble prayer, hold our dominion within thy loving care. Help us to find O oh God, in thee, a lasting, rich reward, as waiting for the better day, we ever stand our guard. They mean it. And they have sung those lyrics since childhood. And they mean it. And they are on guard for Canada. Defending Canada against those that would seek to deconstruct Canada. And first and foremost of those who are trying to deconstruct Canada would be Justin Trudeau, who is doing exactly the same thing in Canada as Jacinda Ardern is doing in New Zealand, as Emmanuel Macron is doing in France. And all of those leaders share one thing very much in common. They were all members of the World Economic Forum's Young Leader Group. So they are dedicated to the goals and ambitions of the World Economic Forum and the globalist dreams of Klaus Schwab. Not the goals and dreams and ambitions of the Canadian people under the Canadian Charter of Rights. Trudeau's goals are to disrupt and dismantle Canada. Disrupt and dismantle to the point where everyone is equally dependent on the Canadian government for food, housing, heat, and health. To make Canadians universally dependent. And to enforce a soft, digital communism on the people of Canada, destroying their ability to determine their own futures. So now, in frigid, sub-zero, snow-blown weather, with the ice of winter freezing their boots to the ground, these winter soldiers stand because these are the times that try men's souls. And the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Because tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the heart of the conflict the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too highly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. I want to honor you. Canadian Winter Soldiers. Stand strong against tyranny, and may what you have started in Canada be what inspires every other man and woman and child to do the same. Because we must win. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. Thank you.